All right, welcome to this episode of Photo Theology, and I'm your host, Doug. And today what we're going to be looking at is we are going to be looking at the Nikon D800E, and it will be going up against the Fuji X-E1, and we're going to be looking at it from a resolution test. So, this is going to be something that... Uh, I think you guys are going to actually find pretty interesting here. All right. Now, I want to stress this is not an ISO test. Okay. So, when you're looking at what you're going to be looking at today, and you're actually going to see a whole compilation of videos that are going to be based around resolution, the one thing you're going to find is that I'm not using the deeper ISOs, such as 3200. I might use 3200 at some point. But such as 3200, such as I want to say 6400, or 25,000, or 52,000, or something crazy like that. You don't see me using that. And there is a reason for this. The Nikon D800 is, in many perspectives, considered to be an alternative to a medium format camera. And the reason for this is because it has a high megapixel count. It has high resolution. And what you're going to have to consider when you're talking about high resolution is you have to consider how you're actually acquiring it. So the argument to the, you know, uh, DE800 is the fact that in comparison to, like, for example, the Pentax, the 645D, it's less than a third of the price when it's all said and done, or it's about a third of the price. I'll, I'll correct myself and say it's about a third of the price. And you get 36 effective megapixels versus 40 megapixels. So why not go at it? Now, in the, in the realm of actual, I want to say, photography, where would this be relevant? Okay, if you're talking about doing studio production, okay, in other words, you have control lighting situation, and you're also looking at being able to maximize your resolution, okay? That's where 36 megapixels could mean something to you. Wedding photography. People always want to sit up here and have that certain picture blown up to God knows what end, okay? Or maybe you weren't able to get close enough um, based on your lens assortment, based on the events on the ground, and you got a crop, that kind of thing. And of course you have landscaping, which is also really big as well, okay? So you go to photograph, you know, your subject matter during a landscape, and of course, you know, uh, sometimes you need to have it blown up bigger, you know, like we've already stated, so on and so forth. So in the end, it's all about cropping and also blowing things up. Those two things are what resolution are all about. And in this test today that you're going to see, you are going to see the Fuji EX-1 interpolated, going up against the Nikon D, or, well, yeah, it is the, the D800E. Now, the D800E is the fine-tuned version of the D800. And I actually didn't start with this one, but I'm uh, going to start with this one in terms of the video selection. The reason for this is because Fuji in the past has had a history of interpolation. So I thought it was only fit if I'm going to sit up here and talk about, you know, sensors slash interpolation slash output, who better to go to first than Fuji? And the way this works is very simple. What I did was I used Corel for Fuji to process it to a TIFF. Then I used an interpolation program to actually produce the 36 megapixels that you're, you effectively see. Okay? So that's how it happened. Uh, Nikon, I used A-RAW to process it in a TIFF, and then I used Corel to make the JPEG. All right? Now, keep in mind, Corel is an excellent JPEG conversion tool. Corel is excellent for it. JPEGs are nice. They're sharp. Um, they keep you know, really great content, and I was, you know, pretty happy about that. However, you can't just upscale uh, in Corel. You can't just upscale in certain programs uh, and, and, and um, 
interpolate your image. It doesn't really work that way. And the reason for it is that you need a specialized setup to make that happen. Now, I will be sending, or I will be placing, not sending, but I will be placing a link um, in my description box of the program. And keep in mind, the Fuji XE1, Fuji XC1 runs roughly about 1400. Okay, with the 60 millimeter lens uh, that, you know, this was shot with, or I believe it was 60 millimeter lens. I'll write down the lens that it was, it was shot with too. Uh, you know, you're looking at another, we'll say 600-ish there, somewhere in the zone of that. So you're basically talking about a two grand venture with the Fuji, with the lens. Where with the Nikon, you're talking about roughly, we'll say for the sake of the conversation, three grand to 3,300. Body by itself, not even counting a lens. Not even counting a lens. And the results here are pretty telling. The two ISOs I went with were 200 and I went with 1600. And the reason why I went with these ISOs is because when you look at medium format cameras, normally a medium format camera will not be shot above a 1600 ISO. That's normal. Now there are certain medium format cameras now that are moving into the 6400 range, so on and so forth. And I think, um, you know, Pentex, they missed an opportunity with their six, uh, 645D to actually do a couple of things, but they may do it in the future. But anyways, when you're looking at this, you have to keep in mind the color, the clarity, the sharpness, the dynamic range. Those are the main things that you want to look at when you are looking at these results. I did not mess with the pictures beyond the interpolation. And I want to say the file conversion. That was it. Not a, nothing else whatsoever. And the results, as you are seeing, are astounding. Um, to the point of the Nikon being a 36 megapixel unit, I would definitely say it's got the resolution. Um, but where it does fall short is on dynamic range. Uh, you clearly see blowouts with the unit. Uh, you clearly see a mismanagement of color as well. You know, you have undersaturation in some cases. You just have off tones in other cases, so on and so forth. Now, guys, this is the kind of thing you've got to think about. When Nikon sits up here and says, man, we're going to practically, you know, double the resolution of our D800 in comparison to a Canon Mark III or, you know, a uh, Sony, you know, A99 or whatever it is we're talking about. Okay, something's got to give. And the question is, what is giving? If the cameras all, you know, if all the cameras within the same realm cost the same amount of money, what are you giving up to get that extra resolution? Now, in the case of the Fuji, I do think the Fuji is a fair unit to actually throw out there because the Fuji uses the X-Trans sensor. And the X-Trans sensor uh, setup that they have uh, with their filtering system and the arrangement of the megapixels and all that fun stuff that I'm not going to get into right now is boasted to give you maximized resolutions. It is. And here you see it. Here you see it. Now, to be fair about this, at the 1600 ISO, I do think the Nikon is a tad sharper than the Fuji. I do think that. But the color, dynamic range, and even in the way the noise is presented, plays in the Fuji's favor. This is just a clear case where the Fuji wins this out. Now, understand, the Nikon is better at suppressing its noise, but its colors are more subdued and they're also off. And that kind of cancels out the whole thing about, hey, you know what, we've got better noise control going on here. Because in reality, the Fuji's dynamic range and its color setup in combination with its noise definitely makes up for the noise that you actually see with the Fuji unit. Now, mechanical wise, um, hands down the Fuji is more intelligent than the Nikon when it comes to just pure uh, light reading and you know the ability to produce you know a more accurate picture. That's totally going to the Fuji. All right, dynamic range, all that stuff, that, that's what Fuji is known for. 
For people who want to do nature photography, Nikon versus Fuji, hands down, it goes to the Fuji. You're seeing it for what it is. There are no ands, there are no ifs, there are no buts. I will even be kind enough to actually take sample um, shots that have been done by um, certain people and I will interpolate those at a later point in time and we will do a resolution test that way. So for those of you who are looking at this and saying, well, this is a controlled scenario, you know, in the real world, it's kind of different, da 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 so on and so forth. Uh, well, I mean, you still have shadows there. I mean, you do, let's face it. You look at the picture, you clearly see the shadows. Uh, also, you still are talking the case of a $3,000 camera plus versus a $1,400 camera. Now, $1,400 cameras coming with a kit lens, by the way. Um, in terms of speed, both cameras are actually equal when it comes to speed. Uh, the Nikon shoots at four frames a second, then six frames. Uh, if you crop, uh, the Fuji, on the other hand, will actually shoot at six frames right out of the bat. Um, Autofocusing wise, the Fuji crushes the Nikon. There's no two ways about that. You're talking the Fuji actually having um, literally twice the autofocusing speed of the Nikon. Hands down, it goes to the Fuji in that event. And, you know, the rest is history. So, you guys can sit up here and check this out. I'm also going to sit up here and post the uh, interpolation software. And, and this is how I would think about this, okay? And this is why I did this, all right? Interpolation software costs X amount of dollars, all right? And gives you that 36 megapixel resolution that you just saw today with the Fuji camera. The Nikon, you go out and spend three grand for. And then you got to turn around and buy a lens that can utilize that resolution, which is the key thing here buy a lens that can actually utilize that resolution. And we all know lenses aren't all the same. So you're talking about a grand plus for a lens to actually pull this off. So now, look at the results and you tell me. You guys take care. I'll talk to you later. All right, bye-bye.